In a world where monsters roam and hunters rise, one name echoes through the halls of legend. Welcome back, fellow adventurers, to the recap of solo leveling. Prepare to dive once more into the heart-pounding journey of our protagonist, Jin Wu, as he transcends the boundaries of human potential and embarks on a quest like no other. An agent from the Korean Hunters Association updates Wu Jinshul on the aftermath of the Insects Dungeon and informs him that several hunters, including Huang Gong Suk, have died while only two hunters, Yu Jinho and Sung Jinwu, have survived. Jinwu is noticed by Jinshul as he remembers visiting him in the hospital, along with Kang Taishik. Back at home, Jaina welcomes Jinwu. He has brought food as they relax. Jaina asks about Jinwu's recent raid. Jinwu remains silent, thinking about how he easily defeated these hunters, something his old self was incapable of. That night, Jinwu is awakened by Jaina, who informs him of a call from Yo Jinho at the restaurant. Jinwu meets up with Jinho, and he asks Jinwu to join a raid. Jinho reveals his ambition to become a guildmaster, needing 20 raid experiences for the goal. He tells Jinwu that his father plans to form a guild with an S-rank hunter as leader, his brother as second in command. But the problem is that the only S-rank hunter affiliated with the guild has retired. Jinho attempts to persuade Jinwu to join him. However, Jinwu is hesitant about working with someone. Despite Jinho's assurance to keep Jinwu's secret, Jinwu refuses the offer and leaves another night. Laura informs Dongsu about the death of his older brother. Dongsu contemplates whether he should seek revenge. Dongsu looks at the screen and vows revenge. Meanwhile, at a park, Jinwu stops to check his progress in his daily quest and finds that it is already complete. Finding it strange that the numbers are still increasing despite reaching the required amount, he exceeds his limits and gets a key to an S-rank dungeon, Demon Castle, as a reward from the system. This is the dungeon where he can get the elixir of life that can cure his mother. In the dungeon, he comes across a beast outside the castle, Hell's Gatekeeper Cerberus, and barely defeats him. He gets the recipe for elixir of life as a reward and will need three items to craft, but decides not to go inside the castle, as he is not strong enough. He meets Jinho and agrees to accompany him on 19 solo dungeon raids, with a condition that only he and Jinwu will go and clear the dungeon. But Jinho tells him that there is the required eight hunter quota. Jinwu suggests hiring additional help, but still going alone. Jinho agrees. Meanwhile, Shei Hei, and encounters an agent to recruit her for the Yojin Guild and considers her for Guildmaster. Jin Ho learns from his father about the dungeon's impact on businesses and the necessity tie of forming their own guild, as guilds control all the resources found in dungeons. Jin Wu tries to manipulate the Demon Castle's key requirements, but receives an insignificant bingo card. He contemplates hunting giant centipedes for experience. He receives an urgent D rank dungeon. Notification which he reluctantly accepts. Meanwhile, Song receives the same notification at home. Kim Sang-shik faces his wife's worry over the urgent raid notification. Kim explains that he will have to continue his job to support their daughter's schooling at the Hunters Guild headquarters, Bayek Yonho. The White Tiger Guildmaster meets with Choi Jong-in. The Hunters Guildmaster, Bayek expresses annoyance at an upcoming morning show interview he deems more suitable for Choi, despite Bake's irritation. Choi smoothly shifts the conversation to discussing the emerging Yojin Guild's potential threat. They acknowledge the danger of losing hunters, but Bake presses for the true purpose of their meeting. Meanwhile, Johi resolves to confront her weaknesses, even as she receives a notification for the same urgent D-rank raid. Shai Hei envisits Choi's office, encountering Bayek as he departs. She tells him about the offer from Yo Join to lead their guild and that she has declined the offer later. Baek is in a bar and thinks back about their meeting, in which Choi revealed his wish to reclaim Jeju Island. In the morning, Jin Wu sets off for the urgent raid. Song also heads for the raid and reflects. On his transition to a mage, when he encounters Jin Wu, he notices his remarkable transformation. Approaching the gate, Song and Jin Wu reunite with fellow Double Dungeon survivors, Kim, Kang, and Joho. Tensions rise as Kim and Kang feel overwhelmed by guilt. 
While Juhi seems happy, their reunion is interrupted by the arrival of the strike team, which includes convicted criminals serving as substitute hunters, with Kang Taeshik as the team leader. The group swiftly dispatches goblins, and the prisoner hunters demonstrate their skills under the watchful eye of Kang Taeshik. After the battle, Song notes Jinwoo's remarkable growth in strength and his new dagger, seeing a profound change in Jinwoo. His Arua has also changed in a unique way. When Jinwoo is asked about this change, he hides its real source. Kang asks the group to press forward. At a dungeon fork, Taishik proposes splitting up to make their mission short and quick. Using his heightened perception, Jinwoo finds the boss's location, chooses the left path, and asks Song and Juhi to accompany him. Taishik leads the prisoners down the right path, leaving Kim and Zhongho to take the middle route. As they part ways, Taishik's glance toward Jinwoo as he woo. Kim easily kills goblins, and he comments on how easy this dungeon is. He comments that this dungeon must be really easy, as they sent the world's weakest hunter. Zhang Ho is not happy with his comment, and Kim decides to apologize to Jinwoo after the raid. Meanwhile, Taishik asks the prisoners if they would kill humans as easily as goblins, to which they say yes, as they see no difference between humans and magical beasts. Taishik remembers a meeting with a man who requests that he kill these prisoners because they hurt his daughter and offers him money. Taishik tells prisoners how he will tell people that they were killed by a horde of goblins. Kim and Zhong Ho come across Taishik killing the third prisoner, Jin Wu, Song, and Zhou Harush to the scene. Finding Zhong Ho dead and Kim injured, Kim dies while apologizing to Jin Wu. Taishik attacks Ju He, but Jin Wu intervenes. Taishik plans to kill them all, prompting Song to fight him, asking Zhou Ho for a buff. Despite the buff, Taishik outmatches Song. Song fights with a sword to make Taishik lower his guard and then executes a magic attack. But Taishik beats him before Taishik can finish Song. Jinwu steps in to fight Song, with Taishik suspecting him of a false rank in a second awakening. They clash, and Jinwu receives a task from the system to kill Taishik. Using his new abilities, Jinwoo defeats Taishik, telling Song and Juhi to leave as he deals with the boss. Outside, Song covers expressing gratitude later. Yuhi asks Jinwoo if he remembers. Holding up a small essence stone, Jinwoo and Juhi stroll through a park. Juhi talks to him about her doubts regarding her suitability for the hunter lifestyle. Despite this, she is grateful for being able to meet him. Returning the E-Rank Essence Stone that Jinwu had gifted her, Zhou Hei reveals she has decided to bid farewell to the hunter life, hopeful of crossing paths with Jinwu again soon. Alone, Jinwu thinks about a warning from Wu Jinshul about retaliation from S-Rank Hunter Hua Jung Dong Su. He realizes the need to increase his strength, as he is not strong enough at his current level. Later, Jinwu and Jinho meet their team at a C-Rank Dungeon Gate, Jin Ho selected six hunters who had different challenges that hindered them from regular work, such as injuries, limited experience, or personal struggles like alcoholism. This includes Han Song Yi, an awakened miner, who is Jina's friend. Jin Wu informs the team that only he and Jin Ho will venture into the dungeon, which sparks skepticism among the other hunters. Jin Wu redeems stealth skill he got for defeating Taishik and enters the dungeon with Jin Hu. They easily beat that dungeon in an hour, and they aim to clear three dungeons a day. Jinwoo easily clears dungeons and reaches level 40, and he receives a system alert notifying him of his eligibility for the job change quest. Meanwhile, at the White Tiger Guild headquarters, manager An Sangmin learns about Jinwoo's buying rights to see ranked dungeons, speculates on Jinwoo's potential second awakening, and decides to investigate. Arn and his assistant Kichul arrive at the C rank gate entrance, surprised to find hunters waiting outside. They realize Jinwoo must be tackling the dungeon solo, further confirming his doubts, and he plans to recruit him, are about to leave, but listen as Jinwoo requests a day off for the job quest. Later, Jinwoo and Jinho head to the next gate, leaving Arn and Kichul pondering their next move. Guildmaster Choi Jong has been having nightmares about the failed Jeju Island raid. One such nightmare suddenly awakens him in his office. Clutching the reconnaissance mission plans for the island, Choi realizes that the moment to take action is swiftly approaching at day's end. 
Jinwoo is approached by Anand Kitchell, who attempt to recruit him. Jinwoo reveals his deal with Yojin Construction and turns them down. Ahn negotiates, only to be surprised by Jinwoo's stealth skills. Ahn says that he was looking into C-rank gates and not Jinwoo, and Jinwoo offers to sell three of them for 300 million each, agreeing to buy three gates from Jinwoo. Ahn is left pondering Jinwoo's true potential. The next day, the White Tiger Guild realizes Jinwoo has fooled them, as similar gates were available at a lower price, Jinwoo texts On, suggesting that they're even now. Despite being outmaneuvered, On finds peace in the fact that he now possesses Jinwoo's contact information. Jinwoo sets off in a red truck, eager for his new job change quest as dusk falls. Jinwoo goes into the woods to summon the instance dungeon and proceed with the job change request. Suddenly, a huge purple void gate appears before him. As he enters the gate, he realizes he forgot to complete his daily quest and decides to do it later. Inside, he sees a knight standing, meanwhile, in an elegant dining room. Yo Ma Yung Han enjoys his wine, while his son, Yu Jin Ho, sits across from him. Their conversation is interrupted by the arrival of Yo Jin Sung, older brother. He apologizes for being late, and his father says that his arrival is perfectly timed. Jin Sung greets Jin Ho, while Jin Ho feels a sense of defeat. Back in the dungeon, Jin Wu walks through a corridor. He soon receives a notification stating that potions, full recovery, and access to the store are prohibited in this area, and he can't exit until the quest is completed. He hears metallic thuds echo in the distance and draws Kasaka's Venom Fang from his inventory. A heavily armored beast, resembling a knight, charges toward Jin Wu with its sword drawn. Jin Wu attempts to attack first, but his attack has no effect on the knight's armor, evading the knight's strikes. Jin Wu employs his active skill, the fatal strike, aiming for a critical hit. However, his attempt fails. To penetrate the knight's defense, realizing his brute strength may be more effective, Jin Wu tears the knight apart with his bare hands. Jin Wu gains a level but braces himself for the next challenger. As more knights approach, as the family dinner progresses, Jin Ho's father inquiries about the guild's progress and their struggles to recruit an S-rank member. Jin Ho's C-rank dungeon escapades and ambitions are addressed, with a warning not to deviate from the guild's plans. Jin Ho struggles to maintain composure under his father's questions. Meanwhile, deep in the dungeon's shadows, Jin Wu faces many foes. Choi sets out with his guild members towards Jiju Island. Jin Wu arrives at a throne room and comes across Blood Red Commander Igris. Igris attacks him and gives him a tough time. Jin Wu sends his dagger into inventory as it's not working on Igris. And surprisingly, Igris also leaves all his weapons. Jin Wu still has a hard time fighting Igris, and he beats him with great difficulty. Jin Wu gets Igris' helmet, which is an S rank item, as a reward. He also gets two stones one of which is a teleportation stone. Suddenly, many portals opened around him. He will get points for surviving to. Here, many enemies come out of portals. Jin Wu struggles to survive, and he loses his teleportation stone because of an attack. Jin Wu continues the fight and is pushed to his physical limits. Despite exhaustion and bloodied hands, he refuses to give up. He is haunted by memories of past. He has a vision of Song and Juhi telling him to give up. Suddenly, an illusion of his past self appears before him, tells him to stop the struggle and accept that he has reached his limits. In the chairman's office of the Korean Hunters Association, Go Gun Hee and Woo Jin Shul reflect on the tragedy of the Three Radi Jeju Island raid. Contemplating the further mission back in the dungeon, Jin Woo faces his haunting past self. He keeps on fighting, but he gets overwhelmed, and a knight is about to deliver the final blow just as death seems imminent, a prompt appears before him as he has failed to complete the daily task, and Jin Wu suddenly finds himself transported to the penalty zone. In the desert, Jin Wu ponders whether luck or the system intervened to save him. He purchases mana potions, restoring his fatigue. His serious injuries prevent health potions from healing him. Contemplating recovery options, he's confronted by six enormous desert centipedes bursting from the sands. He realizes that he can recover by leveling up, and Jin Wu confronts them. 
Centipedes with renewed resolve, embracing the pain as a catalyst for growth. In a fierce display of power, Jinwu easily dispatches some of the centipedes, preparing to finish the rest. Meanwhile, Jinus awakened from sleep by an unsettling dream. Upon noticing Jinwu's untouched dinner, she wonders where he might be. Considering if he's still working late or perhaps even has a girlfriend, she hopes for her brother's return before the guardian teacher meeting at her school and falls back to sleep. Jinwu uses the remaining time after defeating the centipedes to recover and prepare, return to the castle. He succeeds in defeating first the horde by identifying the mages as the main players as a reward for performing exceptionally. He gains the title Shadow Monarch and the ability to bring the dead back to life as his shadow army. He extracts the shadow army from the enemies he has just killed, and he even extracts Igris as his shadow knight after trying three times. Meanwhile, the S-rank hunters make a horrifying discovery. The Jeju Island S-rank monsters have begun to evolve, and that's a wrap on season one of solo leveling. But the adventure is far from over. Subscribe now to stay up to date on all things solo leveling and join us as we unravel the mysteries that lie ahead. Thank you for joining us on this unforgettable journey. Until next time, fellow adventurers.